Welcome to the webinar today. It is March 30th, 2015, and we are have a few things to talk about, but mostly during this webinar, um, it is a question and answer session for our students of the Pronunciation Pro course. So I'm, I'm uh, so glad to have all of you here today and participating in this core in, in this webinar. Um, this is this webinar is specific for you, so. I want to make sure that we're addressing your questions, that you're getting feedback for what um, what you need help on in this uh, during what you need help on as you're going through the the 12 week pronunciation pro course. Um, so as you have questions, go ahead and write them in the questions box here um, in your control panel panel of this webinar, and we will get to them. Okay, so I'm going to do a short little introduction here and a short little lesson um, here at the beginning and then we'll jump right in. So today, let me make sure everything's working the way it needs. Here we go. Okay, so just to introduce you, oh, well, let me go back here. There we go. Okay, a little introduction for those who, uh, so this is, if this is your first webinar and you're just getting started with the course, my name is Annie Rudin. And I am a, um, a certified speech language pathologist. And what that just means is that I have um, quite a bit of background and training and education um, when it comes to um, understanding how speech works and speech and language and specifically um, accents and pronunciation. So I've spent um, many years kind of studying and focusing in on the um, how to how to teach the American accent and American pronunciation. And, um, and so that's what I do and I love. This is my little family. I have three very energetic little boys that I enjoy so much and a very supportive husband that, uh, that is, is very helpful with those energetic boys. So, um, so if you are new here to Pronunciation Pro, you will, uh, if you haven't yet been in contact with Gidiani and Andrea, you probably will. Gidiani handles a lot of the um, emails and helps me kind of um, get get things sorted out with accounts and any logistical questions that you have about the course. And Andrea is, she is another speech pathologist who works um, to give feedback and training for our, our um, plus and premier package um, students. So you'll have a lot of uh, interaction with them as you go through the course as well as me. So today we are going to go over a few things. This success steps one, two, three, four, five um, is referring to a question that I get frequently, which is how exactly should I practice during this program? So this is usually at the beginning of the course where they're getting introduced to the course and they're saying, okay, so I have, I've been told that I need to practice for 30 minutes a day at least and, and that I need to do that. So exactly what am I supposed to do in that 30 minutes? I get questions about, well, there's, there's the videos that are kind of 30 minutes to an hour and a half, but then how exactly should I practice after that? So I wanted to give you <clears throat> kind of a step-by-step -step um, the ways that I've found to be the most effective for my students as they're doing their own practice. Because as we know, it's not just a matter of watching the videos and, you know, once a week and being like, oh, okay, that makes sense. And then waiting until the next week's videos come. They come, they come one week at a time, not because I think that it's going to take you a whole week to watch the videos, but it does, does take um, a week to be able to watch the videos practice on your own, apply them, those, those skills and those lessons to your daily conversations, your daily life, bring your awareness to what's happening in your communication throughout the week. And there's just this, this transformation that happens as you both learn the information and then internalize it and then, and then try to apply it in your daily life. And I don't want to rush that process. So, um, so this is kind of the format that I like to see from my students. The fir first of all, and before we even get into the steps, the five steps, 
Um, the most important part of this program is establishing your daily practice routine. Now, this is setting your own daily routine so that there is a, a set amount of time or a specific time that you know this is, what I, this is when I'm practicing my pronunciation and this is when I'm working on it. So I say 30 minutes a day, and that 30 minutes I want it to be your your focusing on exactly pronunciation. You're thinking about your pronunciation, you're, you're practicing it out loud, all of that. Um, now I realize that it's difficult to be completely 100% perfect in this. And that's not, that's, that's, I don't want you to get into your head that, oh, unless I can do it 30 minutes every single day for the next 12 weeks perfectly, then I shouldn't even try because that's exactly what I don't want you to do. Um, but you need to be as consistent as possible. The results come at, come faster the more consistent you are in that practice time. So being able to think to yourself and say, when am I going to do this? When can I fit it in during my day? A lot of the practice, as especially as you get further into the course, a lot of the practice has to do with just using it in your daily life situations, which we'll talk about. Um, so it doesn't have to be 30 minutes in, in addition to everything else you have to do. But, um, but I need you to be as consistent as possible with that practice because that's where the change is going to happen, is in that practice and is in that routine of, of um, getting your mouth moving in those new ways so that it can then be transferred into your daily conversation. So let's talk a little bit about kind of the, you know, the five steps that I like you to see as you go through this course, or I like to see as you go through this whole course. So the first is to watch the videos. Obviously, you, you go into the website, you're going to watch the videos. There's a lot of kind of practicing along with the videos. Um, you want to make sure that you understand the concept and that you're able to kind of repeat what I'm doing. Okay, so that's a big part of it. Um, and then so as you're as you're practicing along with the videos, you definitely have to repeat it out loud and be engaged with that. All right, let's see. Sorry, something might be happening here with. Okay. The second is I need you to review and practice the downloadable materials. So um, there are downloadable worksheets and MP3 files that come along with each lesson. And I want you to download those so that you have them personally. I don't want you to download the videos, but those, those uh, worksheets and the MP3 files are for you to keep um, for yourself and to use. So I've had a lot of students who download the MP3s and then they listen to that as they're commuting to work or they're driving or they're doing things um, or they're doing things that they can kind of be in a situation where they can repeat it out loud along with the MP3 file. Um, so that's a way to a great way to practice. <clears throat> with the worksheets, don't hesitate to make notes on it. So underlining important sounds that you need to be paying attention to, circling things that you want to bring your awareness to. These worksheets can really be um, a great tool for you. As you're going through the lessons and you're bringing your awareness, then you can think, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to, I don't know exactly how to pronounce that. I'm going to circle it um, and then ask Annie in a webinar or, you know, there's certain strategies that I want you to, I, I want you to be more engaged with those materials as you practice. So it's the first watching the videos, then, then pulling out the worksheets. Once you understand kind of how to make the sounds, you don't need to watch the videos over and over again. You just need to take that worksheet and say, okay, I'm going to read this out loud. I'm going to practice that, out, practice it, and I'm going to get comfortable with that uh, as comfortable as possible. So what happens with your mouth movements is the more you do it, the more comfortable your mouth is going to get in that new position, in that new movement, and you'll feel it. Like, uh, uh, like with my live students, as I, the first time we go through uh, a worksheet, it's really laborsome. It's really hard for them to get their mouth in position. The second and third time they go through it, you can tell that their mouth is loosening up and they're getting they're getting more comfortable with the movement of that sound. So think about that as you are, say, the TH sound. If you practice it the first time and you're thinking, oh, this is excruciating. I, it's hard for me to get my mouth in that position. Um, keep doing it because the more you do that and the more you practice with those those worksheets and practice that out loud, the more comfortable that's going to be for you 
And the more consistent you are with that, the faster that is going to happen. Okay, the third part is you have to practice out loud. Um, I had one student that was telling me that before she joined this course, there was, she was trying to practice her pronunciation, but she would just do it in her head. She would just kind of think about how she thought it would be should be pronounced and then um, kind of work on it that way, which is exactly the opposite of what you need to be doing. Um, so practicing pronunciation, what you're doing is you're exercising your mouth. You're, you're practicing moving the, the, your mouth in a specific way, and your mouth is a muscle. It has to be moved to be exercised. So it's kind of like reading a book about learning to swim <laughs> um, instead of actually getting in the water and practicing swimming. Um, so if you're just practicing in your head, it's just not going to do you any good. You have to get those movements. You have to get those muscles moving. Um, the fourth is you have to practice materials from your daily life. So you're learning these skills um, in the videos. You're practicing them in the worksheets. You're reading them out loud. And then what I want you to do is kind of set aside the worksheets and say, okay, I know I'm, I'm working on the TH sound, and I am more and more comfortable with it. So now um, I'm going to pull out a, a presentation I'm working on for work. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm going to pull out a presentation I'm working on, and I'm going to go ahead and circle all the TH sounds in this presentation or this speech if I have it written out. And, um, and then I'm going to practice reading that out loud. And I'm going to bring my attention to that sound or whatever I'm working on that week. I need to bring my attention to that. So this is what I'm talking about as far as using your own materials um, to be able to practice. You already need to practice your presentation. Um, that's a, just a, a good skill to, to develop or good practice to, to, to develop as you're giving presentations and you're doing that kind of thing for work. So might as well bring your focus to your pronunciation, bring your focus to those areas that you're practicing or you're needing to practice and use those materials that, that, uh, that are applicable to your daily life. Now this can be applied to books you're reading. So say you have a book that you're reading in English and, and uh, you can pull out that book and just kind of focus on the specific sounds you're working on. Um, news articles online, um, you know, pull up, you're reading the news anyway during the, in, uh, in your day, so might as well read it out loud and practice that pronunciation. Okay, there's a hundred different ways for you to practice. I want you to kind of but using materials from your daily life is going to be the most helpful for you in transitioning it to your daily experiences. All right, um, practice in daily conversation. So this is a big step from reading and kind of doing things out, out loud and then in conversations. So it's going to take a little while to get to that conversational level. But if all you can think of it, think of in your um, in your conversations is just those three easy tips. Slow down, move your mouth, speak up. If you can just remember that, then your mouth, sorry, my <coughs> throat. I've got allergy season here going on. Um, so if you can just remember those in your conversations at first, then the practice time that you have every day will start will be training your mouth to move in certain ways and then as you just remember to kind of slow down your mouth mouth and your mind are going to remember those movements that you've been practicing so it'll it'll transition eventually <coughs> excuse me so that just th those are the five ways hmm <coughs> Excuse me, I'm so sorry. All right, so <clears throat> those are the five ways I want you to be practicing consistently. And here are a few other ideas. So watching movies or TV shows and repeating along with those. Reading out loud to children. A lot of us are, you know, have young kids and they want to be read to. 
So reading out loud to them and focusing and bringing that awareness to the way that you're reading, the, the pronunciation you're using, the rhythm you're using, and, um, and reading, reading in that manner to your children. A lot of times reading to children, you're already exaggerating things and kind of getting, getting more emphasis on that pronunciation, so it works quite well. Um, get feedback from friends, from your children, <laughs> from um, if, if you have a mentor or something like that, that helps. Um, listening to audiobooks or podcasts is helpful um, to, to understand that rhythm. And there are many, many other ways to do this, but, um, but those are some ideas. Okay, so what's important is I want you to come up with your plan, especially your routine. I want to make sure that you're getting that routine in place. Okay, so let's get into your questions here. Um, I did have, and I'm, I'm, I want to make sure that those who answered these, asked these questions are here today. But um, so I had a couple of emails uh, that were sent to me about um, some sounds that they're wondering about. So Kemi, I see that you're here. So the final R sound is what you are wondering about. So I'm gonna unmute you. Hi, Kemi. How are you? Hi, Annie. Hi. Good to see, good to have you here. So I'm gonna actually let me pull into worksheet. So it's the final the final R sound that you're having a hard time with. Are there any specific words that you're thinking? Oh, this is so hard for me to figure out how to say this. Um, it's just like words like H E R. R E. Okay, here. Um, yeah. Yeah, words like S U R E, just words that have R at the end of it. Okay, so it sounds like you're able to say the sound R, but it's just in that situation where it's at the end of the words that's getting tricky for you. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, so I'm pulling up here. So it's not R at the beginning of the word. So let me actually hear you say um, some of these words. Those, these are words. So go ahead and say this for me. I, uh, hopefully that's big enough on your screen. So some of these word practice. Okay. So say these words for me. Okay. Write. Mm -hmm. Read. Run. River. Perfect. Okay. I'm really? going to stop you right there because your R at the beginning of the word is fantastic. So what I like to do is we have three different R, R videos and lessons to work on because sometimes it's just in one position. So let me just hear word practice with the R blends. So say the first five here. Okay. Trust, prize, great, free, dry. Perfect. Okay, so that's exactly the R we want. So now it's more at the end. So let's go through uh, these first five. Some of them are at the end, some are in the middle, but I just want to hear, hear those. Okay. Start, car, North, war, work. Okay, so I hear what you're talking Turkey. about. Yeah, so I hear what you're talking about in terms of when it's that R vowel. So it's not actually just the R at the end of the words that I'm hearing, kind of that um, kind of lighter R sound. It's, it's just R vowels, okay? okay. So what we want to make okay. sure, uh, so do this for me. So you can say the R at the beginning of a word, so what we like to do in these situations is if you're having a hard time with the R at the end of the word, then I want you to put a word, so like car red. I want you to say that, car red. Car red. Okay, and so let's connect those a little more, car red. So it's just you're, as if you're saying just one, one word, car okay. red. Car red. There it car is. Car red. Okay, car red. So let's do war red. War red. War red. Uh -huh. War red. Okay, so. War red. Okay, so then just do that same. So let's see if we can kind of cut off the red. So war red, war. War red, war. There it is. War red, war. <laughs> okay, so that's what you have to do is you can kind of have to make sure that you can connect it to a the sound that you can say. So like ear okay. red, ear red ear. Okay. Ear red ear. 
ear, red ear. Perfect. <laughs> Thank okay. You. <laughs> That's exactly what you have to do because you have that. What you have to kind of play on what you have. Okay. So you kind of have to okay. use what you have and see if you can kind of work it in there to get your mouth in position because it's just that tongue. It was. It's not fully wanting to get into that full position in that R vowel. But if you pair it with what okay. you already know, then it can get there. So let's do. Uh, so do star red. Do that for me. Star it. Uh huh. And then just say start. Okay. Start. There you go. And then do this one. Start. And then how about? Car. Yeah. And then next one. North. Mm hmm. North. War. There it is. Okay, so once you're getting that, once you kind of get comfortable with getting that R in position the same way as you have the R in the other position, then you can kind of practice that, okay? Okay, thank you very much for okay. the help. You're very welcome. Good job. Okay, so now, let's see. Um, I am going to... So then Becca... Becca was talking about, she had quite a few, a uh, few that were saying, okay, there's the final D and then the G and the K, the V and the F and the N sound. So, um, so what I want you to do is, let, let me make sure, see if Becca is here. Not exactly seeing her on the call. So what I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about these sounds, and if you if you have if you're having problems with any of these sounds and want to volunteer to kind of practice some of these sounds with me, um, then go ahead and kind of do the raise the hand icon to volunteer as I'm talking through these a little bit. So the final D sound. This one is actually interesting because um, we talk about in the very first week with those final voiced consonants. So you have the D sound, da, 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 da. Got to make sure the D pronunciation is right there. And I don't know how my, uh, if my video is showing up very well. Um, but um, it's going to be right there behind your front teeth. So da, 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 da. It's going to, your tongue is touching right behind. Oh, just a second. I think the audio is having some problems here. All right, let me make sure everyone's hearing me okay. I think our the audio cut there for just a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and start over with that, um, with that idea. So we have the, the D sound, the final D sound. If there are any of these sounds, Becca's not, not here today, but um, any of these sounds that anybody's having a problem with, will you go ahead and raise your hand? Otherwise, I think I'm going to go on to some other questions. Um, make sure I'm showing my screen here. A few technical problems. Okay, so I'm going to jump into some of the questions that we have here today. Okay, so Kadir, um, Kadir is asking, I'm having a hard time pronouncing the word law as a police officer. Yes, I can see how that would be a hard thing. We want to make sure that you're pronouncing that. Um, also, the familiar word, uh, familiar words like raw and saw. Okay, law, raw, saw. Okay, so Dear, let's go ahead and practice that together here. All right, Kadir. Hi, Annie. How are you How doing? How are you? Good. All right, thank, so we have you. a police Hello. officer with us. All right. Uh, you're you're doing a great job. First of all, let me you know say that. Thank you oh. for that. Uh, I would like to say that. We really you know need practicing to you know to improve, but there are some words even though you know I you know uh, say them several times, 
you know, these words are the ones that, you know, I practice them many times, but still I feel like uncom uncom uncomfortable, uncomfortable, you know, to, mm -hmm. to say them. Mm -hmm. So when I, you know, watch YouTube, sometimes it is like, you know, law, law enforcement officer, and sometimes law, law enforcement officer. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, could you please... Okay, so... Or you are using here Shuasand or Shuasand or, I don't know, law? Law. Yeah. So, law. so what I what I tend to hear, what I do myself, and what I tend to hear as far as the standard um, pronunciation is more like law, law. And so, so there's low. You know, lo, let's see. Do the first pronunciation that you were saying. The first one is law. Just like you said, you know, mm -hmm. law, law, law enforcement, law. Mm -hmm. The other one is law. It's more like maybe British. I don't know. Yeah, law. so that one is law more of a British pronunciation that has kind of a, it, the sound is pulled forward a little bit more. Um, but I hear it more as law, law enforcement. Um, you, he broke the law. Um, there, there's a new law in, in place. So that law, ah, ah sound, um, I think is what's going to be the standard um, I think that as you go through different parts of the United States, there's going to be a little bit difference, you know, a few differences. But if you're pronouncing it as law, I think you're going to get, you know, the majority of people are going to understand that clearly. So, we can, mm -hmm. so if we say, uh, like, you know, law, law, right? Law yeah. enforcement. That's exactly it. Is that right? Yep. Yep. Law enforcement. Law enforcement. Mm -hmm. So do those other ones, raw and saw. Raw. And saw. Exactly. Not saw or raw, right? Right. Raw. Yep. La, ra, and saw. Perfect. I yep. still, I think, need, I still need to work on it, I think. I don't know. Okay. So it's more, anyway, it's more as far as how to feel comfortable with it, I think it's more um, a matter of, one, one part is matter of practice, you know, practicing it in sentences, making sure that you can kind of connect that sound into or that word into a normal sentence that you would say. Listen and also listen to how others are saying it because the more you can listen and hear, oh yeah, they're saying it that way too, the more confidence it brings for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay, yeah. you're very welcome. Yeah, the okay. question. All right. Okay, let's go ahead and get into... Um, okay, uh, Magali is asking, when am I going to learn the R sound? So the R sound comes in week four. So R comes in week four and we're going to, you know, we go into great depth into the R sound. So, um, so that's coming. And if you have any problems with it, um, like Kemi was having, go ahead and, you know, come to these webinars, make sure that you're getting it right. So the RT words. Okay. So, um, Miguel, you're asking about RT words. So let's go ahead and unmute you. Hello, how are you? Good, Annie, how are you? So good, glad to have you here. Thank you. So RT, so give me um, some examples. I'm thinking like smart, that kind of a no, word. No, I think most like in, in the beginning of the word when I try to say something like uh, introverted, okay. I know that sometimes it sounds like more like a D sound than mm -hmm. T sound. Yes. So, so that comes back to the, um, the tap T rule. When a T yeah. is surrounded by vowels, it becomes a D pronunciation. But just to make sure you're aware, this ER right here, so R is not a vowel, but ER is an R vowel. <laughs> so, okay. so that's actually considered an R in terms of this rule. So whenever there's an R vowel before that T, you're going to get that same D pronunciation. So it would actually like words like introverted, did. I'm doing a full D pronunciation instead of the T. So the uh, so British English always pronounces that T introverted, but mm -hmm. American pronunciation is always changing that T to a D, introverted. And for me, it's so hard to move my tongue from the R position to the D position, like from the back of my mouth to the front of my mouth. Oh, okay. To say R, D. I don't know how to do it yet. 
Okay, so um, go ahead and say say introverted for me with that D for the T pronunciation. Introverted. Mm -hmm. So introverted. So it is that it's going to be first syllable stress. So you want to make sure in is the one that stress introverted. Okay, introverted. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's do it. Let's do it again, and let's just do it a few times. So introverted. Okay. Say it after me. Introverted. 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 Mm-hmm. Do it one Introverted. more time. Introverted. Mm-hmm. And do it one more time. Introverted. Okay. Was it a little bit easier the fifth time than the first time? Yeah, I think so. I, I think that I need to know where to put the stress. Right. I think I'm just speaking oh, okay. so flat. Okay, so the introverted. Let me see if I can get the tools I need here. Introverted. Ver. So there's actually kind of two uh, two syllables that are stressed. The first one is getting the primary stress. The third is getting the um, secondary stress. So introverted. 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 Exactly. That's perfect. So think of it as kind of like you're you're starting on a hill on the the stressed part of the syllable so in introverted introverted okay introverted yeah introverted so put it in okay. a sentence um the 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 man has a very introvert introverted personality the man has a um what do you say sorry a man has a has an introverted personality a man has an introverted personality. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so and you when you put it into a phrase there, you want to make sure that everything can kind of connect smoothly. If it doesn't, it just means you need to say it over and over again, either that word over and over again or or those two two words connected over and over again and then expand it to the whole okay. sentence. Yeah, okay. so, so yeah. it's all about that repetition. Yeah. So much of it is just saying it several times because if you think about it, it's like it, it's just that muscle. If muscle has to learn how to move in that new way, it's so used to saying it another way, but the more you repeat it, the more comfortable that mouth is going to be in that position and the more you're going to feel comfortable saying it that way. Okay, yeah, thank you. All right, yeah. thanks. All right, let's see. Let's go on. Okay. Yeah, so we were having some audio issues there for a minute. Um, okay, so I'm not getting any more questions. We still have quite a few things uh, here. So if you have more questions, um, then go ahead and write that in the questions box. I'm going to go ahead and talk about a few things that, you know, questions that I get um, here. And actually, let's go ahead and, and do some of this. This reminded me of um, our practice words for today, because um, some of these have come up as as I've heard you guys speak. Um, the word been, okay, so there are a few words, very common words in English that um, that are pronounced differently than they're spelled. Um, one of them, and I, I rushed through these really quick last week, and so if this is a repeat for you, I'm sorry, but I wanted to give a little bit more time with these. Um, but been, I've been waiting for you. It's not been or, you know, I've been waiting for you. It's not that E sound. It's the short I. I've been waiting for you. I've been waiting for you. I've been waiting for you. So I want you guys to be repeating that. Say that phrase for me. Make sure you're getting that been. I've been. If it feels uncomfortable for you, it probably means that you have to practice that one. I've been waiting for you. All right, another one is of. Very common word, but really it should be spelled UV because it, that's exactly the sounds that it, are being said there. Of, of. Which of these, which of these do you like? Which of, which of these, which of these do you like? Okay. Again. So I get a lot of my students saying again, again. Which is a, a which follows the rules of pronunciation because the rule says 
that when you have two vowels right next to each other, that first one is going to get its long pronunciation. So it really should be a gain. But uh, native speakers, the way we've morphed language and changed things, now the standard has become again. Let's do it again. Let's do it again sometime. Again. All right. How about this one? Says. Says. It should be says, right? Or says. <laughs> says. Um, but it's been reduced to says. She says everything with ease. She says everything with ease. She says everything with ease. Says. The same thing is with said. Said. Instead of said, I've, uh, she, uh, I've said. Um, she said. He said. I didn't write that one down, but that's the same idea. Says and said. And then this one come, came up, and we were talking about how, you know, f having things feel comfortable. And it's a little ironic that the word comfortable really does not feel comfortable to very many non-native English speakers. So here is why. Um, instead of comfortable with four syllables, comfortable, um, the way it's written, um, native speakers reduce that to comfortable. Comfter, and that, that middle sound is a little awkward because we have the F and the T that come right after each other. Comfortable. 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 Are you comfortable? I want somebody to volunteer to say this for me. Um, let's see, Kadir, you, you have your hand up. Uh, I don't know if this was from a previous thing, but um, but is there anybody else either that that wants to volunteer to kind of say this? So Alexandra, let's have you do. Hi, Alexandra. Are you there? Hello. Hi. How can are you? you? Yep, I can hear you. Yes, I am. Okay. Hi. So say this word for me. Comfortable. Oops, I can't hear you. Let's see. Uh, you there? We'll give you a minute. Darn, okay. Anybody Anybody else as we're waiting for you there, Alexandra? Okay, sorry that the, the mic wasn't working so well. Okay, Vimal. Hi, how are you, Vimal? Hey. All hey, right. How are you? Good, hey. good, good to have you here again. Um, all right, can you say that word for me? Comfortable. Comfortable. Comfortable, good. Good, say it one more time. Comfortable. Okay, now in a sentence. All right. So are you, are you comfortable? comfortable? Yeah, exactly. That's perfect. That's exactly right. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and and I will get to your S question right after this. Um, now, let's see. I'm going to put you on the spot, but Kadir, where are you, Kadir? There we go. Kadir, will you say this one for me? Uh, comfortable. Perfect. Comfortable. Yep, exactly. I have a question, Annie. Yeah, go Annie, ahead. I have a question. May I, may I ask it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, yeah, maybe, I don't know, it's a reduction, but, you know, the sentence, does it make sense or does it sound good? Is this a reduction? Normally, we should say it like, you know, does that sound good or does that make sense? But when Americans say it, it is like, is that sound good or is it make sense? Mm -hmm. Or am I right? I don't know. Okay, so are you asking the pronunciation or asking kind of the phrasing of that? I wonder whether, I mean, normally, grammatically, it must feel like, you know, does that sound good? But when we are saying it, are we supposed to say, is that sound good or does that make sense? Yeah, so it would be... The right yeah, I'm trying to think of the, 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 the phrase I would use in that situation. Does that make sense? You know, does that make sense or... Um, but some Americans, uh, they were like saying it's like, does it make sense? I don't know. Maybe they are too fast and yeah. it comes to me like that. I didn't know. But is that, is that, I mean, yeah. So what's happening there is that does that make sense? Instead of saying does that, they're kind of, does it, does it make sense? 
Does it make sense? And they're kind of reducing that. And that's just because they're speaking quickly and they're, they're getting, they're kind of morphing those words together. Um, my, my advice as a non-native speaker, uh, for, uh, for you as a non-native speaker and for all of you is to, is not to morph those sounds like native speakers do. Um, I think that it's kind of a la little bit lazier way of pronouncing, but it, it tends to, if you also have, you know, other sounds that you might be saying incorrectly or just kind of the accent in general, it tends to just kind of confuse your listener. Um, versus if you, if you were to say, instead of, does it make sense? Does it, does it make sense? If you're able to say, does that make sense? And have that nice and clear, precise, then it's going to be a, a lot better for you. So we can say, does it make sense? Does yeah. it make sense? Yeah. So this is the right way, yeah. right? Exactly. That's the right way. Okay. Does it make sense? And uh, is that good? Yeah. Is that good? Is that? Yeah. So okay. all, all of those are perfect. Good. All right. Good. Okay. So I'm going to go down. We've got some more questions. Let's see. So Vimal was saying, how do you pronounce the S properly in multiple combinations? For example, S in the beginning, surprise, sorry, in the middle person, and at the end, class. Okay. So, so Vimal, let's go ahead and have you. Hi, Vimal. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Okay. So let's do, um, okay. So let's say, I want you to say some of these for me. So I want you to say, first of all, with surprise, there's an R in the spelling of surprise that we do not pronounce. So it's just surprise, surprise, surprise. Okay. And it's actually surprise. Okay. So say these for me. I want to hear what you're talking about as far as the S. Surprise. Mm-hmm. Surprise. Yep. Okay. And then do sorry. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Person. Person. In class. Class. Okay. So I'm Can hearing it. Right? Yeah, I'm hearing it correct from you. So let's put it in a sentence. Um, let's see if I can put a sentence together with all of these. Um, I'm sorry that the person... Uh, this person was not in class. It was a surprise to me. <laughs> okay, so say this sentence for me. I'm sorry that the person was not in the class. It was a surprise to me. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those S's sounded good. Sound good. If you want to just kind of sharpen them up in a little bit more, it just means um, a matter of kind of bring that a little bit more tightness to it. But I think that the way you're saying it is perfectly natural. Um, oh, it's perfectly good because I was confused between, you know, SH and S, you know? So I'm just trying to improve on my S sound. Mm -hmm. It looks like I'm doing good. <laughs> yeah, you're doing great. Okay, so say the R sound in service and verse, like you had asked about. Service and verse. Service. Mm hmm Was. Uh-huh. But okay, so say those two again. Let me listen. Service. Was. Okay, so service, you're getting that R very strong. Verse, verse can be pulled back a little bit more. So I'm kind of hearing more of like a vus, vus instead of ver, verse. So say ver for me. Right. Ver. 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 Mm-hmm. And then put the Words. S on. Yeah, there you go. Do it again. Words. Do it again. Yeah. Words. Try one. There you go. Okay, good. So it's, sometimes it's just a matter of slowing it down Words. and breaking the word up and just saying, okay, that's not feeling good for me. So let's let's break it down into syllables and say those syllables. Ver, you know, well, Verse is one syllable, so mm -hmm. just breaking down the sounds, I guess. Verse, verse. Words. And then, okay. Yeah, sounds and then good. like service, you would do the same thing. Service, and then combine them. Service. Service, service. Exactly, okay. All right, great job. So I had one more one in yeah. Cellular, I put the cellular, so that's the, like, I oh, was yeah. confused, like, when it is 
having C and S. So is it different between C and S or? Yes, C and S. Um, so a C can either be a K or a S sound. And um, mm -hmm. that's actually a good question because I haven't ever been asked that um, about kind of how you know whether it's supposed to be a C or, an, or, or, or a K or a S pronunciation because I'm thinking because so cellular I would have to do a little research on that let, let me uh, let me get right. back on that one um, as far as the C right. sound C letter and when to know whether it's a s or a k sound but cellular is an s so cell cell you and this actually has a invisible y in it so cell you lur cellular So say cellular. that one more time. Cellular. Cellular. Good. And you want to make sure that, that those L's and those R's are nice and precise, precise so that you're not cellular, you know, not kind of uh, meshing them together, but that they're precise. So cellular. Cellular. Yeah. Good. Because, you know, if you think of your mouth as a muscle, you want to tighten those muscles to get those precise sounds. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, perfect. Right, thank, thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. Okay, so Kadir, did we answer all your questions? I know you had kind of written a few things out there, but then we had talked. So if if not, you can go ahead and raise your hand and we'll we'll address some of those. But let's see. So we're getting through the questions pretty quick today. Um, if anybody has any questions, go ahead. Um, but let me just kind of talk a little bit about, um, okay, let's go into, so we talked about, um, those words of the day. So if there are specific and going back to kind of the way that you're practicing, let's talk a little bit about the way that you're practicing. And I want to make sure that, that your practice time is deliberate that we're focusing on our practice time, that your, your attention is on your pronunciation, your attention is on your mouth movements. Um, a lot of times it's like, okay, well, how do I know if it's correct or not? Well, when you go, as you go through the program, that's the whole idea is that the program highlights a sound, it highlights a skill, it brings your attention to that skill or that sound, and we want to make sure that you're focused on that and and not thinking, oh, what else am I mispronouncing or what else am I, um, you know, I have, I'm having words, I'm struggling with these words, but we haven't quite gotten to that. Don't focus too much on those specific words or sounds that we haven't talked about yet, because as you go through the course and you have that attention drawn to those specific sounds or those specific uh, kind of rules of rhythm, then it's going to start making more sense to you and you're going to be able to have some tools and some rules to figure those things out, okay? Um, so really concentrate kind of week by week on the lessons you're being given and, um, and then just kind of notice. I want a lot of this program is listening. I want to make sure that you're really bringing your awareness, bringing your attention to the way that people speak. What is their mouth doing? How are they reducing things? I loved how, um, I think it was Kadir that was talking about, or maybe, ooh, I can't remember who it was during today during um, this webinar, but saying, here's the reduction, you know, here was the reduction that I was hearing. Is that right? You know, how should I be saying it? Um, that's exactly what I want you to be doing because as you hear it, you're going to, um, as you're as you're listening and listening with that intent and listening with that awareness that you're getting through the program, then things are going to stand out to you more and more. Um, think of it in terms of and and I also we're going through the rules and we're going for, through specific sounds and we're learning in a specific pattern that way. Um, but I don't want you to get too focused on the rules. I want to make sure that you're also taking a step back, kind of clearing out the rules and saying, okay, I'm just going to listen. Because if you think about it, children, when they're learning a language, they're not learning it through, through spelling or through um, the way it's written um, or learning the rules. What they're doing is they hear somebody say it and they repeat it the same way they're hearing it. 
Um, and so when I'm saying listening to, you know, TV shows or movies or audiobooks with that, with your listening on kind of that listening ears and that active listening, then you start hearing the, the way people are speaking, not necessarily way they should, you know, they're, they should be speaking kind of like these words of the day. If you're just looking at the spelling, you're going to, you know, you're not quite going to get that. But if you're listening to it, then you're going to start picking up on these things. And through this course, we're teaching you the rules, which cover about 80% of English pronunciation. So you're going to get the bulk of it right going by the rules. But as you go along, I want you to make sure that you're also listening for, well, how do they say it? I'm having a hard time with this word. I'm not exactly, you know, very confident in how I'm saying it. How do other people say it? And with the, with the way that we break down sounds and words and syllables and, and kind of dissect these, these words in English, you can use that same skill and that same strategy as you come across words in your daily life that you're not familiar with. So say you're like, okay, um, the word associate, okay, associate or associate, uh, associate, associate, both, both I've heard cor correctly. I've heard people use the, that word correctly in those two different ways. So it's, it's kind of like, okay, there's, uh, I'm reading through this, this presentation of mine, this word comes up. I'm not so sure that I'm not as confident that I'm saying it correctly. Um, Let's see how other people are saying it and maybe ask a colleague and say, how would you say this? And then write it out, kind of use that Rudin phonetics or whatever phonetics you are comfortable with and, and kind of break it down syllable by syllable and thinking, what, it, what are they saying it? And you, you can ask them, will you say it slowly? <laughs> or you can go to the dictionary.com and dictionary.com will say it for you if you click on the, the audio button um, and you get a good chance. Um, to hear it. Okay. Uh, okay, so Andrea is actually uh, our uh, trainer Andrea is on the call today. Hi, Andrea. And she just chimed in. She said, can we make sure that to let clients know that they have if they have questions and words that need help with between webinars that they can email her and add it to the recording and I'll address them too. So this is talking about the plus the plus package um, members and premier members that are getting that feedback from um, our trainers is that if you have specific questions on words that you're having a difficult time with, as you're sending in your assignments and sending in those recordings, then that's a great time to ask about it. So in your conversational sample in those um, with the, the assignments, you can say, I'm having a hard time with this word. Am I saying it correct? Here's how I'm saying it. What would you say? Um, that is a perfect time to get, get feedback on those. Thanks, Andrea, for, for chiming in there. Let's see. I think my audio just cut, so I'm going to wait for a second to make sure that that comes back. Okay, I think the, my audio is back. Sorry, it cut for a minute. So thank you, Andrea, for... Um, for chiming in there. Okay, so our last question is from Miguel. Miguel, I'm going to have you um, unmute you. So Miguel, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Good morning. Good morning. Good to have you here. Thank okay. You. Okay. So let's talk about. You're having troubles with the with DG as in widge or CAG. Okay. So. Correct. So. Yes. Sometimes I pronounce it like if it were C H, which cage. Oh but, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if that the right sound. No, it's not. So this is this is the difference. Is the <coughs> excuse me. Um, at the beginning of the course, the week one, you learn about voiced and voiceless sounds, right? So right. the voice sound has your vocal cords on j and ch. Are pairs, meaning their mouth, your mouth is in the exact same position for both of those sounds, but the j has your voice on. So you're having a hard time saying that with with because you're turning your voice off and it's sounding like a ch sound, right? So we got to make yes. sure. So so we, what we got to make sure is that your voice is turning on. So j. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So do it again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
So when yeah. you do it in a in a word, you just have to make sure it bring bring awareness to that voice. So widge. Widge. Okay, a little bit more voice. Widge. Widge. Mm-hmm. So then do cadge. Cadge. Mm-hmm. So let's do judge. Judge. Okay, so that second one, we've got a, the second, there's two just sounds in there. <coughs> Excuse me. Judge. Yeah, there you go. Judge. So you got, okay. Yeah, so the only difference is that voice. So you got to make sure, excuse me, I'm not dying here. <laughs> um, so you got to make sure that that voice is on for those, okay? And okay, if you have yeah. to even just like hold your throat and kind of feel it until you're able to get yes. that, then that helps too. Okay. All right. Thanks, Miguel. Thank you. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and... um. Wrap it up today. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for your participation. Um, your questions are incredibly valuable as you as we come to these webinars because it really does not only help you and gives you a chance to kind of feel that, but it helps everyone else. Um, I think that was really neat at the beginning, kind of being able to hear that R sound and that transformation of that R as you get that strategy in place. So. It's things like that that I want these webinars to give you that that experience of just like I can't seem to get this. What are what are some what are, how can I get that sound? And as you as we can work together, um, we can get those sounds um, working for you. So um, the key is making sure that you get this. You're able to get the sounds or able to get the strategy, and then you can go practice it on your own. But I know that there's a lot of times that you're like, I'm not sure if I'm doing this correctly. And that's the, where these webinars are important and your feedback for your um, for the, the Plus and Premier Package um, members is that, that that feedback that you're getting um, allows you to kind of feel confident and, yes, I'm doing this correct. I've been told that this is, is correct and so that now I can really practice it and feel confident that I'm practicing it correctly. All right. So thank you so much. Um, oh. Asmi, you jumped in with a few other words, so I have to address them. Asmi, are you there? So, Asmi, is, uh, Asmi are you there? So, you, uh, you were asking about cop, cub, cab, and cab again, or cup. There we go. Will you say these words for me? Asmi, are you there? Okay, so I'm not getting a response there, but Asmi was talking about the difference between cop, cub, cab, and cap. Um, so the vowels here, ah for cop, is that dropped ah, ah. Second one is a. Uh. Third one, ah. Fourth one, ah, again, okay? So cab and cap have the same vowel. Cop, cub, cop, cub, cop, cub, cab. Okay, so those those short vowels are are we talked about in that in week seven, and we contrast those vowels very closely. So those are those are good ones because um uh so that they can, oh, okay, so Asmi is not able to talk in this, in probably the setting he's at. So, cop, cub, cab, cap. Okay, so it's those short vowels are going to be the difference there. All right, good. Good question. Okay, now we'll go back and wrap it up. I always want to make sure that we're getting your questions answered during this. So, if you do have other questions, um, and you're working with Andrea um, or working with the, you know, during through that plus package, then um, as you're submitting assignments, definitely ask as many, you know, ask those questions, get those words clarified, um, help, let the, let your trainer really help you in any way that you can think of during that time. That's the, that's what she's there for. And that's what we're there, here for. 
But if you have any other questions, um, I'm always available at Annie at pronunciationpro.com and I would love to um, help in any way. Okay? So thank you so much for coming. Thank you for your participation. I hope it was helpful for you. And, um, and definitely come to our next webinar. We do these every two weeks. So you have a chance to, um, to get those questions answered and really uh, learn from each other. All right. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful week. And, um, and good luck with your practice and your routine. All right. Thanks.